Hi everyone, welcome back to subject FSD 301. My name is Madam Tabasure Ilangoban. Today I'm going to explain about the chapter 2, OSH Risk Management. These are the learning outcomes for chapter 2. There are four learning outcomes for chapter 2. Assess the hazard identification, risk assessment and risk control process to determine the severity and likelihood of harm to prepare the hierarch table to produce the workplace assignment report. There are five subtopics for chapter two, basic principle of risk management, risk assessment, hazard identification, risk control, and accident record. But in this video, I'm going to explain about three subtopics only, such as basic principle of risk management, risk assessment, and hazard identification. So let's we look at the first subtopic, risk management. Risk management means the total procedure that associate with the hazard, its risk, and the control measures and reviewing the outcomes. Risk means the combination of likelihood and also the severity of injury or damage to the health of people, property, environment or any combination of this caused by the event. So basically, risk is the combination of the likelihood and the severity of a specified hazardous event occurring. Risk can be calculated from this formula, likelihood times with severity. Likelihood means event that likely to occur. Severity means outcome from an event such as severity of injury, health of people or damage to the property, or insult to the environment or any combination of those caused by the event. Risk means actually the chance of harm that actually being caused by the hazard. So there is a relationship be between the risk and also the hazard. Basic principle of risk management. There are 11 basic principles based on the ISO International Organization of Standardization. Risk management establishes and sustains value. Risk management is an integral part of all organizational processes. It also, as a part of decision making, addresses uncertainty, systematic, structured, and timely. It also based on the best available information, tailored, takes human and cultural factors into account, transparent and inclusive, dy dynamic, interactive, and responsive to change, and facilitates the continual improvement of the organization. HIREC. HIREC means hazard identification, risk assessment, and the risk control. Actually, HIREC is a basic of risk management. It also as a fundamental to the practice of planning, management, and the operation of a business. The organization that have carried out the risk assessment, they have reported positive changes in their working practice. They recognize the substandard act and working condition as they develop the necessary corrective action. Legislation requires this process should be systematic and recorded so that the results are reliable and the analysis complete. With the high rack, one able to identify the hazard, its risk, and also able to apply the suitable control measures. The purpose of high rack, such as to identify all the factors that may cause harm to the employees, its risk, and also it enable the employers to plan introduce and monitor the preventive measures so that can control the risk at all the times. Process of HIREX requires four simple steps. The first one is classify the work activities. Second is identify the hazard. Third, conduct the risk assessment. And then the fourth will be the apply the control measures. This is the flowchart of HIREC process. As I mentioned earlier, 
The first step is classify the work activities. After classify the work activities, need to consult from the employer representative and also the worker representative. After that, able to identify the hazards, conduct the risk assessment and prepare the risk control action plan and then implement and lastly have to review the hazards. Classify work activities. Okay, let's say in a company or any of the industry, they must have many departments. So each of the departments, they carry out their own work activities. So when prepare the hierarchy, each of the department also, they have to prepare the hierarchy. So each of the departments, they have their work activities. So the work activities can classify based on their similarities, such as geographical or physical areas within or outside the premises, stages in production or service process, not too big or not too small, define the task, for example, loading, packing, mixing, fixing the door. So define the task can be done based on the task that carry out in particular department. Before we conduct the risk assessment, we should identify the hazard. Hazard means is a source or situation that with potential harm. Hazard identification means the identification of undesired events. Actually, there is a relationship between hazard and the risk. Risk means the chance of harm that actually being caused by the hazard. In other words, risk means chance that someone may suffer from injury or illness due to the existing hazard. Therefore, the purpose of hazard identification is to highlight the critical operations of tasks that pose significant risk to the health and the safety of the employees. Okay, there are three main categories of the hazards such as health hazard, safety hazard and the environmental hazards. Okay, let's we watch the examples of the hazards. What is a hazard? A hazard is something that has the potential to be dangerous or cause injury. Unsafe behavior or unsafe ways of working are more often than not the basis for turning a hazard into a near miss or injury. There are many hazards with the potential to cause injury in our business. For example, vehicle movements in the car park and our delivery areas. Forklift truck movements. Sharp, heavy or awkward products we have to move. Forklift trucks are designed to make our lives easier, but present a hazard if we work unsafely. An untidy working environment. And poorly managed contractors. Not using the correct manual handling techniques. And allowing a load to leave the branch unsecured. Hazards like these can be present in your workplace every day. Workplace, for example, the forklift, moving forklift. So if let's say anybody not realize when the forklift is moving, so it can cause the injury to the person behind the forklift. Then the obstacles at the uh, walking platforms. Then when handling the sharp objects, it also can cause the injury. When carry the loads, if they're using the manual handling, it also can cause the harm to the body. So these are the few examples of the hazards you watch from the video just now. Okay, let's we continue. The first category of the hazard is health hazard. Health hazard is any agent that can cause illness to an individual. It may produce serious and immediate effects or can cause the long-term problems. Health hazard have five subcategories such as chemical hazard, biological hazard, physical hazard, ergonomic hazard and psychosocial hazard. Chemical hazard means the chemicals or the substance that can cause harm to the body. For example, all the chemicals stored in the house such as the bleach, the pesticides, welding fume, the cleaning products, battery acid, solvent and etc. Biological hazard means biological substance that pose threats to the living organisms, specifically 
to human health. So the source of the biological hazards such as bacteria, viruses, dust, mold, and then the samples of the microbes, toxins, the medical waste, blood, body fluid can cause the skin irritations to infections and also can cause the allergies. Next is physical hazard. Physical hazard means it's a factor within the environment that can harm the body with or without necessarily touching it. For example, the heat, light, electrical currents, the vibration, noise, and the radiation. Ergonomic hazard means it's a physical factor within the environment also that harm the musculoskeletal system. For example, due to the repetitive movement, the poor body position, uncomfortable workstation, manual handling, and then the poor lighting system. Next is psychosocial hazard. Psychosocial hazard is actually is a, any hazard that can affect the mental well-beings of the worker. For example, stress, the substance that misuse such as the drugs, violence at work, bullying, sexual harassment, and etc. These are the few examples of health hazards such as hazardous chemicals, and then the source of biological hazards such as fungi, viruses, bacteria, and even the coronavirus also one of the source of the biological hazard. Next is the hazard pictogram stated that danger radiation area. So if we saw this type of the hazard pictogram, it shows that the type of the physical hazard. Next is uh, it shows that improper sitting posture. It also affect the body. So it also one of the example of the ergonomic hazard. Next is the individual carry the heavy load. So it also affect the body. So it also one of the example of the ergonomic hazard. The last is bullying. So bullying also one of the psychosocial hazard in workplace. Next is safety hazard. Safety hazard is any force strong enough to cause injury or damage to the property. The injury that caused by the safety hazard is usually obvious compared than the environmental hazard. The examples of the safety hazard is the worker may be badly cut and also cause the bleeding. Okay, safety hazards cause harm when workplace controls are not adequate. Okay, these are the few examples of the safety hazards. For example, the slipping or tripping hazards such as the wires or the extensions run across the floor, fire hazards from the flammable materials, moving parts of machinery, tools and equipment such as pinch and nip points, working at height such as work done on scaffold, and even working at height by using the ladder, also one of the examples. Ejection of material such as from molding, pressure systems such as steam boilers and pipes, vehicles such as forklift and trucks, lifting and other manual handling operations, and also the working alone. These are the examples of the safety hazards, the forklift and the fire hazards from the flammable materials, and then the manual handling, and then the obstacles at the walking platforms. So these are the few examples of the safety hazards. The third category of the hazard is environmental hazard. Environmental hazard is a release to the environment that cause harm and also effects to the surrounding environment. It also affects the human health. Environmental release may be not be obvious compared than the safety hazard. Injury that caused from the safety hazard is more obvious. The example of the environmental hazard, for example, a worker who drains a glycol system and releases the liquid to a storm sewer may not be aware of the effects on the environment. Environmental hazards can cause harm when controls and the work procedures are not followed. 
So these are the examples of the environmental hazards such as the release of the mercury from the thermometer to the surrounding environment and then um, the pollution or the release of the chemicals or the hazardous chemicals to the sea or the environment also pose the uh, effects to the surrounding environment. At last, it also pose the threats to the human health. Okay, so we try to spot the hazards from this video. Assessment. The risk can be presented in many ways to communicate the results of the analysis to make the decision on the types of the risk control. For risk analysis that use the likelihood and the severity in the qualitative method, the results should present in a risk matrix because the risk matrix is a very effective way of communicating the distribution of risk. Okay. So, as I explained earlier, the risk can be calculated from this formula, likelihood times with the severity. Okay. So, this is the risk matrix table. To use this risk matrix table, we should identify the severity column first, then only followed by likelihood. Okay. Based on this risk matrix, there are three levels of risk, low, medium, and high categories. Okay, so these three levels, they classify based on the colors. So if low risk means that must be green color, medium risk is yellow, and high risk is red color. Okay, so if the risk value, let's say they fall from one until four, so it will be fall under category low risk. So if low risk, it's still considered as acceptable. So it means the risk can be resolved quickly and efficiently, but still have to document all the control measures. If the risk value from 5 to 12, then it fall under category medium risk. Medium risk requires a plant approach to control the hazard and also have to apply the temporary control measures. Okay, Still same, the actions that taken must be documented on the risk assessment, including the date for completion. If let's say the risk value uh, 15 to 25, it considered as a high risk and really have to take immediate action to control the hazard. At the same time, all the actions taken must be documented on the risk assessment form, including the date for completion. So, the individual that responsible for these actions, they have to follow up until the risk fully controlled and including the date of completion. A further detailed risk assessment method may require such as quantitative risk assessment as a means of determining the suitable control measures. So far, we already learned about the basic principles of the risk management, the hazard identification and also the risk assessment. So based on what we had learned about the hazard identification, try to spot the hazard from this picture as a small task for you. That's all from me. Thank you.